Hello, I'm Dr. Beth Godey. And I'm Dr. Martha Leatherman. I'm a geriatric specialist in psychiatry. And I'm a neuropsychologist, and I specialize in aging. We're experts in dementia care, and we're here to provide you some information and answer some questions that we hear very commonly about dementia and other issues in aging. Hi. I, you know, I want to ask you a question, Dr. Leatherman, because I know as a physician, um, it must be frustrating to have patients who will not be compliant with your recommendations. And the both of us have families come to us with a loved one with dementia and say, you know, we've had long talks with mom or dad about taking their medication or doing those exercises the physical therapist wanted and she just doesn't seem to want to do anything or understand that. So when families talk to you about that, what do you tell them as advice on what to do? Well, I think first of all, you have to go back and, and you've encapsulated it well. Um, the non-compliant patient is a big problem for physicians. And interestingly, it's, it's a big focus of a lot of the healthcare debate going on because it wastes money and resources. If you were diagnosed with something and told to stay on a diet or take medication and you don't, and you're back in the hospital with complications, that's, that's very, very expensive. So it's, it's a societal problem. But what do we mean by non-compliant? I mean, there are people who just say, I really don't care if I have diabetes. Um, I want to eat what I want to eat, and it doesn't matter. Or there are people who are forgetful. Um, you know, the, the physician gives instructions, gives medications, and they forget to take the medication, but they can cover it well. And we've talked about people with severe memory problems who, because they're sociable and have, have good verbal skills. Um, people don't know the extent of their memory problems. So, And during that period of time they're with the physician, those few moments, they seem like they would be able to track right. how often to check their blood sugar over right. the day. And a lot of times families will say, um, it's not my business to make my mother or father take their medication. Um, you know, he hasn't been diagnosed with dementia He's a grown person, he can do whatever he wants, not realizing the, the terrible uh, memory problems that may be going on. And, and probably the most frustrating non-compliant patient is the, the patient with the frontal lobe problems. And you alluded to that a little bit a minute ago. You might want to look back at some of our other videos uh, on this subject because we've talked about frontal lobe problems in many contexts, but even when we describe it to, <laughs> to patients and families, maybe the next week somebody will come in and say, well, I told her over and over and over she has to do those rehab exercises or else the knee replacement is not going to heal properly, and she's just, she won't do it. Even understanding the frontal lobe problems, when it arises in a new situation, you may not be able to, to see, oh, that's, oh, that's, the, what that's the frontal lobe thing. So talking about that one a little bit, if, if you're in a situation where um, a loved one, and, and I see it so often with rehab, that they go to the rehab facility like after a hip replacement or after a, a knee replacement, and everything goes really well in, in the rehab facility because they've got the structure. They've got physical therapists coming in, telling them to do a certain number of exercises, just standing there with them while they do it, and then now go home and be sure to keep this up. And the families will say, well, you know, I remind her, and she says she's going to do it, but then she's just non-compliant and she's not getting better. Yeah, and, it, and sometimes families really, uh, you talked about this just a minute ago, families really are hesitant to intervene. Mm -hmm. They, you know, you, you really are having difficulty parenting your parent or telling your spouse what to do so that you, you just hope for the best 
And that's not going to work with people who have dementia, especially with the frontal lobe problems. Right. And there are lots of different uh, high-tech machines to remind you to take medications, but even those don't work. Uh, if, if the person goes over and turns off the little alarm, I wonder what this alarm is here for, mm -hmm. and turns it off and the medications are still sitting there. Right. But right. families really are hesitant to intervene, and they really don't have a good hold on the frontal lobe problems. I think that a lot of times these things uh, come to the forefront and come to recognition after a surgery or after an illness. Um, and again, most commonly I see it after some kind of elective surgery for a, a knee replacement, for example. If, if you find yourself in that position with a family member where they've had the knee replacement and they're doing great in rehab and they go home and things are just kind of going downhill, the, the clue there is that they had more help in rehab and they, they need more help at home. Right. Um, you really have, get, they've had too much independence. And you may be able to withdraw some of that help later on, but, but that that was too big a change in terms of assistance for them. And you need to go back and get some more help. For more answers to questions like these, our book, The Insider's Guide to Dementia Care, is available at Amazon.com.